Welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to learn how to age well, look and feel better for longer. And in recent months, I've had quite a few viewers ask if I do a video listing the products, devices and treatments I've tried along the way that I think have made a difference in terms of improving the quality and the appearance of my skin. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. For those who haven't watched my channel before, welcome. I explore a lot of anti-aging products and advice through my own experience and also through interviewing experts too. And you can find more content on how to age well and look and feel better for longer over on my website, honest.scott. But today, this is all about my experience to date as I set out the skincare, treatments and devices that made the difference. So firstly, what's my goal aged 50 with skincare? Because as I've said before on this channel, fretting over every wrinkle and sign of aging is a miserable game that's not going to do your self-esteem or mental health any good. So my goal with skincare, along with eating well and keeping active, I take a few supplements too, is simply to have the healthiest possible skin for my age. I'm not setting out to look 10 years younger. I mean, that would be nice. But it's mainly to look and feel vibrant and try to support the volume and the bounce in my skin. And I'm going to start with the skincare products that I feel have made the biggest difference in terms of helping to reverse age-related damage that I started out with when I first got into this five years ago, and also to maintain my skin and support its long-term health and vitality with products that nourish, as well as using actives that will gently stimulate, and things like peptides to help put back a little of what is being lost in our skin. The products I most highly rate are the ones that I use day to day now because I've cherry picked skincare over time from trying out lots of different brands. Now our skin types are different and they will respond differently to different types of skincare. What works for some doesn't necessarily work for others, but hopefully you'll at least get a little inspiration from this video. It goes without saying, and so I won't labor the point, that with the vast majority of age related damage to our skin being from unprotected sun exposure, photo damage in other words, I wear sunscreen on my face and neck every day. Now living in Scotland where it's often cloudy, I don't tend to top it up throughout the day unless I'm going to be in the sun for hours. But I walk two to three times a day, so first thing as part of my routine, I apply Blue Lean sunscreen as my last step. Blue Lean incorporates methylene blue. It's an antioxidant which is used as a dye and for its antifungal and antimicrobial properties and which is thought to help slow aging on the skin and is being used in some medical treatments as well. It has a fascinating story behind it. You can learn more about it in this interview here with scientist and Blue Lean founder, Dr. Kan So I will also link related videos in the description below, along with all the products mentioned here today and any discount codes that I've been able to source for them too. So the Blue Lean sunscreen incorporates both methylene blue and a physical sunscreen rather than a chemical one. And it's my way of incorporating methylene blue into my skincare routine and using it for its protective effects on my skin while moving away from some of the chemical sunscreens that are under scrutiny at the moment. Now, the fact that methylene blue has been shown to slow cell aging and the turnover of skin cells in studies means that it works very differently to retinoids, which act to speed up the cell turnover of your skin to bring out the newer skin underneath and have a smoothing effect on fine lines and also help reduce pore size and even help treat acne. Dr. Sao doesn't recommend you use Blue Lean with a retinoid. However, I'm not prepared to give up retinoids totally at this point in time because of the skin smoothing and brightening effects that they have on my skin. And so I've been using Blue Lean daily in sunscreen form alongside a retinaldehyde or retinol. So I use a retinol serum every other day now for months. And so far my face is still intact, combining the two, no obvious downsides. And I'm at my happiest place with my skincare routine right now. So I've no reason to make any big changes at the moment. And while I can totally see the theory behind not combining them, in practice for me, using Blue Lean as an antioxidant with sunscreening properties and then using a retinol every other night just seems to work. My skin is the healthiest I think it's ever been. It's bright, it's hydrated, it has volume, and the texture 
particularly noticeable around my eyes, which are naturally very hooded. And so any loss of hydration, density, creppiness can be really aging. And I think I've been able to stabilize and even improve the sagging around my eyes in recent years. I will do a video dedicated to non-surgical ways to lift eyelids in a few weeks time, but everything I talked about in this video has been helpful for me. As for which retinal serum I use, I use Geek and Gorgeous Retinal in Strength 10. It's an excellent product and great value too. So again, that's linked below. I use just a pea size amount every other night. So it lasts me months and is right up there as one of my favorite skin products of all time. It's non-irritating, but it's a highly effective retinoid that keeps my skin clear and bright and isn't drying. I had to stop using tretinoin, also known as retinoic acid, because although I thought it did get to work on fine lines on my skin and it definitely helped minimize the pores on my nose, no matter what I did, it was just too strong for my skin. Even at 0.05%, my skin was dry and it was affecting the volume and the health of my skin. Now that's not the case for everyone. For some, tretinoin is absolutely the gold standard in anti-aging skincare. But you should also know that even if with longer term use, you're still having those bouts of dryness, redness or irritation that you always get at the start. If your skin isn't looking plump and well hydrated, then stepping down in strength and frequency or trying something like a retinal, which is the bridge between retinol and retinoic acid or tretinoin, that might be something worth trying. Retinol is just one conversion step away from retinoic acid and I am a big fan. So in the morning then, I'm just washing my face with either good old CeraVe foaming wash, which is very gentle, or I've recently been using this balm gel from small independent skincare company, Harborus, which is made simply from glycerine and a seed oil blend, and it cleanses without stripping moisture from your skin. So it's very good for older, drier, sensitive skin too. From there, I use a vitamin C serum. At the moment, I'm using one from Medic8, I find Medic 8 products to be brilliantly formulated, but they're on the pricier side. So I often alternate with a lower price vitamin C serum from Geek and Gorgeous, which it, again, like the retinal, is very affordable. Vitamin C is, is very unstable. So to keep it in premium condition, you can uh, keep both of those serums in the fridge so they don't break down and discolor and decant them into a smaller bottle and that way they'll last a lot longer. After vitamin C, I add number seven's Future Renew Serum. I've done loads on peptides on this channel because I think they're gonna be a big part of the future of skincare. You can watch my most recent video about the power of peptides here, but the number seven serum is one of the most evidenced in the business. Currently, I use it every morning. It includes a copy of a human peptide that we lose as we age and is basically designed to replace that in our skin. From there, I apply the Blue Lean sunscreen and I'm done. In the evening, I wash the makeup off my face with CeraVe. I apply the Geek and Gorgeous Retinal every other night and then I use Calisum's multi-action cream. I have done lots of videos on Calisum. I'll link to the most recent one below. Their advanced hair system helped my 79 year old dad visibly regain hair. So that really switched me on to its potential for skin and hair regeneration. It's derived from stem cells taken from red deer umbilical cord. They contain billions of stem cells. So they've only used one or two umbilical cords so far to power their entire range. The peptides and cytokines, which help control inflammation, are extracted from the stem cells and used in the cream. And the bottom line with it is it's expensive, but it's really my one big spend on my skin. And I just use it nightly. And I believe that having used it for over six months now, it has made a visible difference to my skin, which is balanced, bouncy, and well hydrated. The other thing I credit, which I've only just in the last three months started using very regularly is red light. So once I got comfortable with usage times and frequencies, because I do think there is such a thing as too much red light. Again, I've looked at this on this channel. You can have too much of anything and this is no different. But after looking at the research and talking to experts, I realized you can gain benefits with just a few minutes of frequent use. So I started using my red light mask most nights for six minutes. And when I work out on my elliptical machine first thing in the morning, I wear a red light eye mask for three minutes. 
Now, we don't have hard science around exact times that benefit our skin before tipping into being too much for our skin, and it would likely vary from person to person anyway. But this, for me, feels about right. And again, I believe and I appreciate it's hard to separate which particular thing has done the most for my skin, but with each new element added into what is still a reasonably simple routine, I feel I've seen growing benefits. So I've talked about things like laser and radio frequency devices before on this channel. If you put heat or energy into your skin, it will do something. And I have seen shorter term benefits from using these kind of devices in the past. But over the last year or so, I have moved away from what I would call more aggressive treatments to just using gentle stimulation for my skin, which I believe supports its long-term health. So that's the reason I don't use very strong skincare actives. I don't use very powerful devices. That's a personal choice based on years of experience, research, and viewer feedback as well. But the other thing to keep in mind is, as I've said before, our skin types differ, and in years to come, our skin will be analyzed and will be recommended personalized treatments and strengths based on what is likely to work best for our own skin. Finding the balance between intensity of actives and treatments is as much an art as a science, as one recent contributor said. So you can start out gentle and build up when it comes to skincare and devices and let your skin tell you what's working and what's not. Some skins can tolerate and benefit from a lot more than others. I talked a couple of weeks ago about microcurrents, so I'm not going to go back over it. I can link to that video in the description, but basically I use the Zip microcurrent and nanocurrent device. I use the new Halo device from Zip three to four times a week, and I love it for helping keep my jowls in check. It's gentle and it's comfortable to use while being effective. And as I said, I've shied away from higher intensity um, treatments and devices, including higher intensity micro microcurrent, because I feel that for me, it doesn't support the natural volume of my skin. I've also been building an, an element of microneedling recently. I'd used the Cure Microfusion facial system over a period of a few months, so I can link to that video too. That was a really good way to get into microneedling because you basically get a set of individual microneedle stamps and serums that are attached to it. So as you stamp your skin, you're infusing the serums into the upper layers. I've run out of them now and it is on my to-do list to either buy a replacement kit from Cure or buy a microneedling pen and try to do that once or twice a month because I do think microneedling is another effective tool in helping to address wrinkles. It can be really useful for treating acne scars and smoothing skin too, but it's a bit of a commitment and with so little free time at the moment, that has kind of fallen by the wayside. It's also worth saying that I take both collagen powder and a hyaluronic acid capsule daily for skin and their wider health benefits too. And I will list all the supplements I take below um, because things like vitamin D and omega-3 are really important too. Finally, and my poor husband who will be editing this video and having to add in the footage of all these different products and me using them, he will by now be saying, thank goodness she's nearly finished. So finally, I wanted to touch on just a couple of the in-clinic treatments that I've tried as well. So for sagging skin on my eyelids, I had not one, not two, but five Tixel treatments a few years ago. It did give me a bit of a lift because I had really quite significant sagging on already hooded eyes and my skin was being stretched due to swelling and fluid retention that I was experiencing because of allergies. So that was something I had to get on top of too. This is the before and after from the Tixel treatments. You can see it helped, but it's not close to the kind of result you would expect from a surgical eye lift. I've also had Ull Therapy. Again, here's the before and the after. The bottom line was it was very good for lifting jowls and sorting out uh, the little double chin that I'd been building up. But in hindsight, I believe that alongside the skin tightening I saw, it, I did also experience fat loss in my cheeks. I regained a lot of it through lifestyle and a gentle but strategic anti-aging skincare routine. But I would be careful next time about where I had all therapy. I would just really focus it along the jowls and under the chin. I do get a little Botox, but just once a year. So the last time I had it was in January. Um, it has eased off now. Um, but I have it done between my eyebrows in my 11s and a little right at the top. So I can't go too close above the eyes because it would make my lids droop, basically. Tomorrow, 
the lovely Dr. Emmeline, who's a frequent guest on this channel, is going to put in a little filler hyaluronic acid just around my temples to give me a slight eye lift. So I'm going to film that treatment and you can see the results for yourself and I'll package all that up in a video on ways to lift your lids without surgery, which will include the things I think have helped most over the years. And I think that's pretty much it as far as my your current routine and the things that I think have made a difference for me go. And you know, when it comes to devices, really now I'm just looking at red light and microcurrent for the time being until someone convinces me otherwise. I'll be back next week with a discussion with Dr. Emmeline and Dr. Chen on injectable hyaluronic acid fillers, the pros and cons with them, right when I'm about to have it done myself, and also the risk versus the return of having them dissolved because there have been a few reported issues with filler dissolver. So if you haven't already, then by subscribing and hitting the notification bell, you'll see each new video from me as they're published. And by giving the video a thumbs up, you help it reach a wider audience. And do let me know in the comments if my skincare routine resonates with you. Is yours similar? What's working big time for you, do you think? For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.